this video, uh, a few people asked me about minimalism, switching to a minimalistic lifestyle. And this is actually something that I really love talking about. It's not for everyone. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'd like to share about how, how it's been for me. So after my near death experience in 2017, being out of the body had a real lightness. And I realized I was still fully me and fully valuable and could be fully content even without the body, without stuff. I was, I was still 100%. So coming back into my life, coming back into my body and continuing on was appreciated and valued but not with the same level of attachment as before. It was an interesting balance because I love all the nice things. I'm a Taurus and um, I like some nice clothes, some nice gadgets, you know. I, I really loved how I had decorated my house, you know. So it wasn't that I didn't appreciate or want those things or rejected them as bad. Not at all. It was that I was appreciating them, but didn't need them for my happiness anymore. In that year after the car accident, I was slowly integrating and trying to make as much sense as I could and gaining new insights based on what happened. There was just so much there. Part of my process was to declutter my house as much as possible. After a big decluttering process, I still didn't feel, I felt like something was still off for me. I think so much had changed and I, I wasn't finding that having my typical Western house with spending lots of time mowing the lawn and shoveling the snow and cleaning and all those kind of things, nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with it, but I wanted to put my energy into something else. I wanted to free up that time and space of kind of caretaking all this stuff into something different. I didn't know when I was actually going to die <laughs> and what kind of a lifestyle did I want to experience that's different and maybe a bit more lighter than what I had been living up until, up until then. So about a year after the accident, I decided to sell my house. I put a lot of my, more precious items into a small storage locker and sold and gave away the rest, the big stuff, the furniture, all that kind of thing. I didn't feel compelled to go looking to buy a new house and kind of start that process again. I felt drawn to, to seeing if I could live in a van, in a camper van. I'd seen people online telling their stories about doing it, and now I had an opportunity to give it a try. I knew it probably wouldn't be a forever thing, but I went out and um, after I sold my house, I got the camper van, and I had two big dogs, and we had a blast for almost two years, except for in the super cold months. We lived in the van, and it was comfortable. You know, there was an early nice bed, the ceiling was high, you could move around. And I got that time freed up, you know, it took me about two minutes to clean up after myself in the camper van and even cooking, you know, like there's a propane stove, you know, I, I could just, you know, heat up some soup, eat simple foods that also freed up a lot of time too. And again, I totally love all the stuff, all the, all the tasty meals. I, I actually really love cooking. I had a million spices in my house. But I realized, you know, I, I can go for a nice dinner. I can visit friends. I'm, I, I'm okay with or without that. And one of the nice things about living in the van was sometimes I'd pull up. I often stayed in different places in nature, provincial parks, lakes. And sometimes I would pull up somewhere at night and, uh, and I wouldn't know what the view, the, what the view was going to be like until I woke up in the morning. And that was pretty awesome. There was a huge window at the back of the van. And when I was sleeping, I was facing, I was facing that window. So I would wake up and there would be like a TV screen, but it was nature. 
and it was so cool. A couple of times, even there was deer walking by in the morning before I got myself out of bed and they had no idea I could see them. And, you know, there was a lot of really special moments like that. Another time I, I was pulled up in front of a lake in a camping spot and I couldn't sleep. It was a, it was a full moon. It was really bright out and I just couldn't sleep. And, uh, as I was tossing and turning, I was like, I'm going to go swimming. I got up and I had one, one of my dogs loved swimming and it was, it was so magical. We went swimming in the lake under the full moon, just me and my dog. And moments like this being in nature with nobody else around, just silence, many of them brought me a sliver of what it was like in my near death experience to be connected to everything around me. Anyways, it wasn't a forever thing. So after a couple of years, I sold my van and I ended up emptying out my storage locker, you know, selling and giving away everything that was in there. I had a big suitcase. I had a really big suitcase and a carry on bag, like my laptop bag and a purse. And I just stuffed everything that I could into there because I, I thought I'm going to go to Mexico. I don't know how long I'm going to travel in Mexico. Uh, and I, I need to have all these things and very quickly after being in Mexico, I really realized how heavy and annoying carrying that much stuff around had become. It was more out of the inconvenience and heaviness of having these large travel items and being going from place to place that caused me to be like, okay, what's the smallest bag I can manage? What do I really need and want to have with me the most? I'm going to make it work out of sheer convenience. So I got a smaller carry on size bag and gave away a ton of clothes. I realized you really don't need that many clothes when you're traveling. You need some comfortable things, a bit of a variety, you know, a dress, a couple shirts, a sweater, but really you don't need or even want to have much more than that. I even had a lot of books, I think. And I, I kind of kept my, my two favorite books and thought, you know, if I really want to read one of these other books again in my life, I'm sure I can find it. Not a big deal. So once I got myself down to a carry on size luggage, it was a lot lighter and easier for me to get around. I didn't dread packing and repacking after being in Mexico and kind of figuring out what was going to work for me getting used to a travel lifestyle. I moved to, I, I visited a couple of other countries and then I went to Africa. I went to Tanzania and lived in a lot of different places throughout Tanzania. And I learned so much from the people in Tanzania. I started off volunteering, volunteering at a rural school. And that helped me to meet people, get connected with the community. And I realized that these people don't live that different than me. You know, they have very simple homes. They have everything that is basic. And they don't feel like they're lacking anything. In fact, sometimes I would buy gifts, you know, something for their home. And I could tell by their reaction, it was almost like, why would you, like, why would you spend money? Like they appreciated the gifts, but it's like, oh, thanks. You know, <laughs> to them, it was more valuable to spend money on things like making a big meal and inviting all of your neighbors and just being together, having celebrations. Um, they valued, and it wasn't about the food. It was literally about the coming together and the energy of that. So I started to see how they didn't need material items other than the basics in order to feel content and having more of them going after the next best thing. It wasn't something that they needed to do to be happy. Something else is animals. I really love animals. And my, my two dogs were with a friend. They still are actually with a friend. They have new homes. And everywhere that I went, 
I would just connect with the animals there. It was like the universe has everything that you need if you trust. Everywhere I go, there's going to be, you know, soap, shampoo, a towel. I don't need to drag around as much as I thought. And yeah, the animals. You know, everyone, often people have pets. Or there's even, you know, animals in the streets. And, you know, I would, I would keep... I would keep little snacks in my bag to, to feed them and connect with them as I, as I traveled. And it became a really beautiful, a really beautiful way to, to always have animals in my life. They're, you know, in the developing world, they're everywhere. We get a lot of advertisements for things that we think are going to make us happy if we own them. Even growing up, we're programmed from a young age to watch sitcoms where we see normal families or, or ideal families in ideal homes that are associated with the success. So we have in our mind this, this Western view of if I have this, I'm going to be happy. And if I don't have this or I lose this, then I'm not going to be happy and I've got to figure out a way of getting it back. We don't realize the extent of that even like I don't even realize the extent of that I do a little bit more now that I'm out of it now that I I feel free from that but we don't even realize that we're in it and it's great if you have it but there's always that fear of losing it or not being able to make that payment or not being able to upgrade this or that, or not being able to get the ne next best thing. Or if, or if a person wants to take better care of themselves and prior to, prioritize their health or pri prioritize their time doing something that brings them a lot more life, like a hobby or a creative endeavor, they probably, most people can't cut back on their hours or, or switch down to part time because they have, they have so much that they have to, to maintain and keep. And this is not a judgment on any people. It's what we've created together in the Western world. The developing world obviously, obviously has a ton of problems. I'm not trying to say that it's better, but what I have noticed is that these people have become my teachers in non-attachment and being completely content with the basics. And so for me, a typical Western lifestyle that I grew up in and created for myself for most of my adult life, that lifestyle that I put so much energy and focus and attention into an attachment to mostly was because I thought that that would equal my value and make me feel comfortable. There's a quote from the book, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. And he says, verily the lust for comfort murders the passion of the soul. And then walks grinning at the funeral. The lust for comfort murders the passion of the soul and then walks grinning at the funeral. So at the end of our life, have we attached to a certain material standard of lifestyle to keep ourselves comfortable to our own soul's detriment? And the answer for that question is gonna be completely different from person to person. If you do feel called to minimalism in any way, shape or form, if you feel called to minimalism in a really dramatic way, 
The universe has your back. In fact, I believe that it's closer to nature as I've seen again in the developing world. It's closer to following the natural laws of simplicity. And when we're within the natural laws, when we're within the universal laws, we're actually in a, a system that's, that's more safe. And it connects us with other people too. You know, if, if I need help with something, if there's something that I don't have that I need, I'm going to reach out to someone in my community, in my environment, another traveler, something like that, and vice versa. But when I'm sitting in myself, sitting in my house with myself, relying on myself, I am just independent and self-sufficient. I'm not connected. Nature is connected. Nature is, is connected. And um, so I would suggest that the more minimal lifestyle, the more within being in the moment and trusting that your needs are going to be met, that's going to become louder. And it can be scary to make these kind of shifts. It can be unusual. It's something that is totally against our programming. But after a while, you just start to realize that just like the law of gravity, we can't see the law of gravity, but we've seen it happen over and over and over that we just know this is how things work. Like the law of gravity, these universal laws of being cared for, taken care of, by the universe when we when we walk this type of a path we start to realize it's not so hard to trust anymore yeah there are moments for sure trust that the needs are going to be met trust that everything's going to be okay there are moments for sure but for the most part everything's everything is going to be okay even if you if you shed if you shed attachments, you're still going to be you. Nobody can take away the true essence of who you are, your soul's qualities. Those things don't leave you. Those things are you. And we're developing those things together. Countless, countless of us are, are developing those things together. And those things aren't heavy. There's no need to attach to those things because they are who we are. They're not outside of us. And I would say that from my experience, letting go of these attachments creates a lot of space for a lot more beautiful things. Moments of synchronicity, moments of sacredness, for example, A bird of a species that I've never seen lands on a tree right outside my window with beautiful colors. And I am in that moment with that bird, just amazed at how beautiful it is. You know, an old man smiles in the street while he's, while he's cooking food at a little stand. And in that moment, we are, we are one together. We're taking in each other's uniqueness. I'm staying in a hostel right now, and <laughs> I don't know how he snuck in here, but the door was part open, and a cat snuck in. I didn't know they had a cat here. And he just started walking, just, just before this video, he started walking towards me from the other side of the room, and it really shocked me because I didn't see that he had snuck in. I paused the video, actually, and... I just had a moment with this cat. <laughs> and so, you know, these things, they, they stand a little bit cliche, but all day, beautiful things, beautiful sacred moments that are free and transient. They come, they come, they come, they come, especially when traveling, especially when traveling in the developing world where things are less controlled by a materialistic system and nature, nature is everywhere. Nature is, is flowing free. A little bit more free so 
if you're called to non-attachment, letting go, it's not just about stuff. It's about our programming. It's about what we think we need to be happy. It could even come down to um, relationships, codependent relationships, where we're really clinging on and, and holding on to another person and their how they behave and their presence in our life and what they do for us or what they don't do for us and how often they show up for us. You know, we have so many different attachments. We have so many different ways of, so many different opportunities to switch to minimalism, whether it's material stuff or, or, or people or expectations or anything. So Godspeed to all people who are, who are letting go of attachments to make space for something more sacred. <laughs>